Now, Dr. Violet, what have we got here? Well, Bill, what we have here is a method <clears throat> for measuring noise generated on a power line by a device or an appliance such as this blender. Now, what could that do? Interfere with television or? The answer is that this noise now could interfere with radio, TV reception, or computer operation if these devices are connected to the same power system as the blender. Okay. Now, in order to make the measurements, we use this device called an absorbing clamp. And the absorbing clamp has a number of ferrite cores. All of these on this end isolate the blender from the rest of the power cord. Then the two, the two cores on the end are in the form of a transformer that pick up the RF noise generated by the power cord. Now, the clamp is normally operated in a closed position. And then we move the clamp up and down after we turn the blender on, and then we observe the noise level on the spectrum analyzer. Okay, let's turn the blender on and take a look. Okay. Now you notice when the blender was turned on, and as I move the blender, uh, as I move the absorbing clamp up and down, you notice that the peak levels of the noise is above the limit line. Now the limit line is that straight line on the upper line. That's correct. Side. Okay. And in order for the device to pass, the peaks of all that noise are supposed to be below that line. Now, you could not market this device as it stands right now. That's correct. Okay, let me turn it off. All right, so how do we fix this? In order to fix this problem, we have to put some kind of a filter on the power cord. Now, in this particular case, the filter is a ferrite core. And this is the easy one to illustrate, and this is what we're going to do at this time. Okay, now what we did in order to save ourselves some time was uh, install the core, so it's on there right now, and we're ready to continue with our testing. Um, turn it on. Off. Now with the core on, if you notice now, the output of the power clamp on the spectrum analyzer shows that the noise level is below the limit line, which means that the ferrite core has essentially solved our problem. And this product could be marketed and then would uh, fall within the requirements. That's requirements. correct, provided either this core or one like it with the same performance is installed to the blender. Okay, Dr. Violet, we're back in this uh, shielded room again. What are we going to look at this time? That's correct. This is a switching power supply. And a switching power supply will tend to inject noise on the power cord. That's the AC power cord that feeds it. Now, for any other equipment, we're also connected to the same circuit that this cord is connected to. Well, then the noise could interfere with the equipment, such as radio reception, TV reception, and so forth. How would you demonstrate this problem using your equipment? Well, we have a power supply with a cord that's not filtered at this point. Now, I will turn on the supply, and what we're looking here on the spectrum analyzer is the frequency spectrum from 450 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, which is the measurements that we make on power cord uh, for the FCC Part 15 conducted power line measurement. You will note at the lower end of the spectrum at this point, where the dot is above the horizontal line, which is the limit. All the noise on the power cord has to be below that limit. Of course, now this power supply fails this particular test. How do we fix it? One way to fix it is to install power line filters. And what we have here is one of these typical power line filters. And this particular filter installed on the power line properly installed will suppress the noise enough so that we can pass. Now on this particular piece of cord I have one of these filters installed for convenience I should add because what we want to do is install that filter properly. Now here I have uh, what you say is an example of how that should be done. Now, what we show inside this box is one of these power line filters properly installed. And that's extremely important because a good power line filter improperly installed is not likely to be too effective. 
but this one for demonstration purposes is installed this way as part of the cord. That's correct. And of course we have to expect this filter not to be as effective as it might be if it had been properly installed, but we will see that it still works. Now I bring your attention to the spectrum analyzer once again, and notice at the lower end, where before the filter was installed, we exceeded the limit line, but now we're well below the limit. So this power supply now, which would have failed before, has passed and would That's be correct. able to be manufactured. It could be manufactured and installed in electronic equipment, such as computers. Well, very interesting. Well, Michael, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to look at uh, some of these problems and how you fix them. So uh, what's in it for Washington Lab in the future here? Well, Bill, we're going to continue to uh, increase our staff and our